Happy. Ladies and gentlemen, from CNN, Rep. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez supports Biden's re-election bid. Congratulations. AOC is an establishment shill. That's what you get. And uh, of course, she's going to preface this a little bit with like, no, I'm saying like hypothetically I would if, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what, this is how politics goes. AOC is this young upstart who's challenging the machine and is a real leftist. Then as soon as she gets into office, she starts ponying up to the establishment. You see that video where like she changes her vote or something like that. I, you know, it's been a while since I, like Pelosi yells at her and then her vote changes or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But here's the story because we want to make sure the context is clear. Democratic rep, Democratic rep AOC said Thursday that she will support President Joe Biden's re-election bid given the challengers he currently faces in the primary. Author Marion Williamson, an environmental lawyer, and anti-vaccine activist Robert F. Kennedy have launched campaigns. When asked on the Pod Save America podcast whether she would back Biden, she said, I believe given that field, yes. Amazing. There's your uh, leftist. There's your new uh, up-and-coming progressive. I guarantee you, in a few years, she's going to start moving up. People have talked about maybe she'll run for Senate. She's got millions of followers. She is going to be as establishment as establishment can be. She'll be That's coming right. out being like, stop insulting my banker friends. The people who run the Federal Reserve are good people trying to make America. She's going to be like Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. She's going to just say whatever she's going to say. So the press says something positive and then she tricks people into voting for her. She's already basically there. Congratulations. She's also super valuable to the political elite. Like when it comes to the establishment, her her reach is insane. She's oh, yeah. incredibly inspirational to a lot of young left wing women. I mean, our audience is ridiculous. I don't know. Partially, you can probably blame uh, a part of the right for doing that. But she's really, really valuable for them. So she's, naturally, I think that direction and they would they would give her as much power as she needs and all that stuff because they want her. She's she's a part their of the establishment. She's their actual Pied Piper in that she's playing that little flute and dancing all the progressives right into the hands of the neo neoliberal establishment. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I, I so an interesting question because when AOC first won her primary back in I think it was like 2018, I thought I said it was a good thing. I was like, good, get these establishment Democrat shills out, Crowley was a prominent, like, uh, fourth in line in the Democratic Party or whatever. She, she, she gets rid of him. She takes over. And I said, she may be, you know, a leftist or whatever, but I'll take a left populist over a corporatist neolib shill and warmonger. And what does she turn out to be? All that and worse. <laughs> term limits. So. And it, this is a problem is they go in there, you get co-opted. I don't even blame her. I blame the system itself. We need term limits because she should you be know, two and out. Yeah. But you know what it is? Yeah. It's AOC has nothing going for her. Does she have merit? Does she have talent and ability? To a certain degree, the answer is yes. But would she be anything other than a bartender if she did not get elected? What we see with so many members of Congress and politicians is that they don't have the merit to do anything other than win the beauty pageant. And once they do, they're terrified. Look, if I don't win my reelection, what happens next? Right. Where's yeah. Madison Cawthorn? Right. He's in the news every day. He's got something going for him. He loses the primary and now he's no longer relevant. So if you're someone who wants to be who wants, who wants to matter and you don't have the ability, politics is your game. And then what happens is they get in and they're like, OK, I can't lose this. Nancy Pelosi probably goes to AOC and says, we will do everything in our power to make sure you lose unless you play ball. Do you want to be the up and coming young star of the Democratic Party or do you want to go back to the bar? And she's like, please, Nancy. I'll do anything you say. I, I, and here you go. I know Matt Gates yeah. is, I don't know if these, they're, they're friends or whatever, but he's mentioned to us that he would enjoy having her come on the show with him at some point and oh, have come like on. a debate. DeSantis' people won't even he, come on this show. He actually Not mentioned Ilhan show. Omar specifically right. multiple I times. I remember that. And he, so they, they have a, a bond of some sort, probably because they're young and in Congress. They're, they're like all this Freedom Caucus. and They've, the, maybe, they've worked uh, together a little bit as well, as well. I would be shocked if she actually said they, yes. They, um, they, I would they, be really happy shocked. about it. But oh, they're they're great. Great. I'm just thinking of ways to head it off at the past before 20 years go by and she is fully established, right. scary, like Bro, she mob mentality. She right. endorsed Biden a year and a half out. Come yeah, on. Yeah, but she, uh, with a caveat that at this stage uh -huh. with those two people that he's running against, I would. What's her opposition to RFK? I don't know. Well, I, I, that's, a good it's, question. It, that's how you know that they're full of if, it. Like, if Newsom does announce too, uh, she would go Newsom for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing about RFK is. Um, yeah, I disagree with him on a lot of things, but he's 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 more populist. He's speaking to the people. And so it's like, oh, OK, I get it to her, for her to be like, oh, man, I'd rather have Biden. Are you kidding? You'd rather have Biden. Come on. Warmonger establishment. Come on, man. Yeah, I, I would take Marion Williamson over both of them, to be completely honest. 
I think she's very nice. Oh, she'd she's be a good guest. Hilarious. She's cool. I, we've invited her several times. Yeah. She's actually very, very nice. I, I have a lot of respect for her. I feel so bad for how the media mistreats her and how people make fun of her. Uh, that's unfair. She may be wrong about things, as most people are, but she, she seems to be a genuine nice person who really does want to make a difference. I think we would all benefit from having that conversation with her. And she set the record straight about crystals. She doesn't actually own crystals. It, but, but this well, is the I do. But, but this is how they play the book. <laughs> they called her in the media the crystal woo-woo lady. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so sad to see her be like, I don't understand. I don't own any crystals. I've never <laughs> done anything with this. Why are they saying that about me? It's like, welcome to the political arena. Yep. Oh, now, yeah. now yeah. Marianne, we're, I'm a fan. Everything bad they said about you. Now think about what you think of Donald Trump. Welcome to the same game. Donald Trump is far from perfect, and we know he said some nasty things. But when they come at you and they say you're the crystal woo-woo lady, think about what they call Donald Trump and how, you, how it's not real. And then people come out and they're like, but a court found that he was responsible for a rape 30 years ago. And it's like, dude, spare me your ultra-liberal New York district ruling that a 30-year-old case with no evidence, it makes him responsible. It's just, these are, it's political nonsense. Yeah. That's the name of the game. Yeah, it's always interesting seeing people actually wake up. It, usually, I mean, I don't know if they fully get out of it, but her seeing how she was treated by the media and just kind of putting that, or if she was on the show, definitely putting that into perspective with her to say, look at look what we're dealing with. You dealt with that for just a brief moment. We deal with that, the right deals with that every day, right? This unfair treatment from the massive media machine. Tulsi Gabbard's another one that had that big time. Uh, just for a splash sure. in the face of like, yeah. what am I up against? Totally I, woke up. When they uh, yep. she called out Kamala Harris and basically tanked her opportunity to become president if she ever even no, had but, one. No, but it was no, before no. that. It, it was, was <laughs> it was Bernie. Yeah, yeah. They called her a Russian asset. No, she's like, so dude, she, I, she's like a cur was a colonel in the military. They, they, they viewed her as an up and coming young star yeah. for the Democratic Party. And then when it came to Bernie versus Hillary, she said Bernie. And they were like, you've just ended your career. Yeah, and now she's like she, a remember how entertainer, she, basically. Remember how she called out Clinton, Hillary Clinton? She called her like the ultimate warmonger, the queen of warmongers. <laughs> right. She like just, just absolutely. She called her something or worse than that, right? Yeah, it was. It was. Re it, she excoriated her. I don't. I don't have I the, the actual you. quote right in front of me, but she absolutely excoriated her. It was one of the most brilliant political, one of the most brave political things that I've ever seen anyone do. Someone actually running on the Democrat ticket, calling Hillary Clinton. Mm, it was queen the, of warmongers. Yeah, yeah, queen of warmongers. Literally <laughs> just I like tearing her apart. <laughs> And after that, when I saw that, I was like, look, she got terrible takes on the two way, but I back her if she's going after Clinton, you know, see, this is, this, yeah. this is what this is what I like. Right. We have uh, we had we did the culture war show today and we had uh, Stephen Bonnell. Uh, is it Bonnell? Is it Bonnell? Bonnell. Uh, Bonnell. Destiny. He's a liberal guy. Um, we, even after the show, we we're hanging out and we were having disagreements. But Destiny is an honest guy. He could be wrong about something sometimes. We all are. But I know that if we if we come and have a conversation, he's actually going to try and make a point that he thinks is true and honestly assess what we are saying to him. Then you have the actual cultural left, which is people like AOC, who will just lie, cheat, and steal for political power. You have people like Tulsi Gabbard, who was being honest in what her views were and probably wrong on some things, same as most people are, but was being honest to you on why she thought those things and was genuinely listening to you. They're, 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 it's, it's almost like the culture war factions, we always try to define what they are, but I can tell you one characteristic at the very least is if you hold leftist political opinions, but tell the truth, you're right wing. Plain, plain and simple. Yeah. That's how it goes. Uh, I was actually talking with Destiny about it. He said it was funny that, um, you know, when we do these shows with leftists, they make the assumption of what my political opinions are because in their world, if you don't follow their narrative, you're right wing. So they'll say things like, I'm pro-life or something like that, which is like, I'm like, none of these, like, these things are not true. You don't know what my opinions actually are. These people make things up. I mean, come on, like what it would take to endorse someone like Biden. You know what I mean? And, and for that matter, I'm seeing a lot of that with the, with the DeSantis people as well. I'll have a conversation with people who support Trump. And some people are fervently cult, culty for Trump. And it, and it is kind of creepy. Yeah. But most of the prominent Trump people will absolutely concede Trump's faults because it is the authentic and appropriate way to approach the conversation. Hey, you don't like this thing about Trump? Let me talk to you and maybe convince you that there's still some net positives here. The DeSantis people, it's like they're, they're just identical to Democrats. No matter what DeSantis does, he is, he is uh, infallible. He is, he is unimpeachable. So DeSantis makes a mistake. And they will say it was actually a good thing. I wonder if the people you're talking about when you say the DeSantis people, you mean like people that are following? Well, and, he, and people in his campaign. Uh, he, hardcore followers on Twitter, but maybe. I wonder, that, yeah. I wonder if what they're doing is 
it's like an AI or a foreign agent sowing dissent between DeSantis and you because you have a, a show and a voice. So if they see some contention, they're going to be like, ooh, I'm going to make Tim angry and be like, DeSantis is great, you moron. And then you you think of that it's DeSantis is somehow connected with that. It is. Insane response. Well, there's no way to know. It no, I do be- because they have verification badges and, and profiles that say they- working for the DeSantis campaign. Those then maybe, but that's, that's, that's who I'm talking that, about. That seems like a, a pretty big giveaway, right? Yeah. And so when I <laughs> when I say something semi innocuous, like "Wow, I can't believe this thing happened," and they start just attacking me on Twitter, I'm like, "What? Why are you attacking me?" And so, uh, like, well, it's 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 you you get the point. It really does feel like they are very much like acting as Democrats do towards Trump. Yeah. It seems to me yeah. like they have like a. a book of rules that they've written out and studied but they don't really get the nuances of why the rules work but they're just following them all expecting them to be you know to make them cool in that way it's just like we all see it's not working yeah it's like a it's a list right and you got to check every single box and right. if you differ such as destiny who probably differs a lot from a lot of people on the left you're kicked out of that cult when it comes to the extreme left wing, if you differ at all, you're completely out. You know, Tim, I was talking um, to one of your viewers the other day. I just ran in, a- into him in the street. Uh, libertarian kind of guy, you know, diff- disagrees with people on the right, disagrees with people on the left. But he was talking to leftist protesters, gender, you know, cult protesters. And he was just saying, he was just asking them some basic questions. And you might agree with them on some stuff. But they were just calling him a fascist and telling him to get the hell out of there, even though he might have agreed on some things. Oh, yeah, with them. it's a cult. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.